and currently he is a post doctor fellow before joining us uh, like uh, from agriculture department of us uh, he was post doctor fellow at israel so he he has very good experience in his field uh, he worked on fish parasites fish parasitology parasitology he has many publications in like uh, national international journals and uh, uh, currently he is working on also parasite uh, so he'll he he'll be better to uh, like explain about himself so we welcome him on behalf of mbsi and uh, uh, all also on behalf of dr soranjit singh sir and uh, i welcome uh, dr aditya now you can you are the host now you can just interact with the, our audience and i also i'm very sorry that i got late because uh, i uh, I, I i forget actually uh, so i'm sorry from the audience as well and from uh, dr saranjit singh sorry sir for uh, this uh, blunder mistake uh, i'll not repeat it again i'm sorry so we can no, not, it's all right uh, without, it's all right uh, the time we Sunil. can just start sir yes sir it is all right you did very well and i welcome aditya gupta to give us a very interesting talk and i'm sure it will help mbsi in a big way and your talk will be on youtube which will be seen by about 30000 people oh so we great. look forward we look forward for exciting talk from you please yeah. uh, a very good morning to everyone uh, dr sir suranjit sir and dr sunil i'm really thankful to you for all the introduction we had been friends for like since my graduation and uh, thanks for providing this opportunity uh, i can say it's morning in india but here it's like uh, 3 past 12 in the night so it was i'm really excited to deliver this talk to interact with like the eminent scientist eminent worker research workers and it's a lifelong learning experience for me and because uh, i did my phd in fish parasitology that is mixozoa and then i uh, i'm now working at usda us department of agriculture and one of the best scientist dr jitender dubey uh, my work is on uh, this beef parasites basically so uh, even i talked to dr sunil that why not to make it more interactive because i found uh, the differences in india the research and the the mindset associated with the food parasites the food born pathogens as compared to us and then i was also in israel for two and a half years so i could share my experiences basically uh, the the like when i got this opportunity this invitation i could see uh, sir from imtech and the director and the other ones so it's really my pleasure my it's a privilege to uh, pre present something so sunil I, i can share my screen right now then i can start Uh, is it visible is it visible right now sunil no? yes yes sir, it is visible yes sir okay. hello uh, hello please mute your mic all of you mute your mics uh i hope now i can i can start sharing my thoughts okay sir yes we yes, start yeah so basically i'll be i'll be talking with the food born pathogens and uh, like we are eating food which is adulterated and we know that we are e e eating a lot of food uh, which are adulterated mixed with all these chemicals preservatives but still uh, there is something which Uh, like i don't know we are not able to control ourselves and we know that this industry is booming up and but still somewhere we are lacking the basic conscious and the in, like you can say the intellect so uh, i got this like why does the bacon taste and then the uh, if you talk about the maggi the noodles the junk food we see that people put a lot of ajinomotos and all these chemicals and it tastes so well and you, uh, we use the the frozen stuff all these preservatives somewhere we know that it is going to deteriorate our health but still uh, the need of the r is to know what's wrong with our mindset what wrongs what what's wrong with the the routine 
So here, if you say the outbreak, outbreak alert, and in McDonald's, one of the it was infected with the cyclospora. Cyclospora is one of the deadly parasites which can cause like a lot of disease, the brain disease, neurological disease. So if we talk about how safe is our food. Uh, let me, yeah. So uh, it can be like the food may contain the pathogens basically, and they could be of moles, yeast, bacteria, uh, these parasite trematodes, cestodes, which I'm going to talk about also, which I'm working on the beef parasites, and then the chemicals and the preservatives, which we already talk about. So if we see, uh, we are not eating the safe food. The food which we eating, which we are eating, it's processed and it's not good for our health. And the hidden toxins lurk in our food is could be chemicals, microplastics, and the cancer causing a lot of stuff. And the, these uh, chemicals, lead, asbestos, which can cause cancer, which can, which is a part of our food. So we know that it consists. Uh, it it can cause health problems for us, and somewhere we are neglecting it. Uh, so recently, uh, just I wanted to share with you all that. Uh, like in India, I saw that when a butcher cuts the meat or the goat, he randomly throws the the small part to. Okay. Okay. So here, if you see uh, the kinococcus granulosus. The meat which is being thrown to these cats and the dogs, it may it may like these canids can act as the reservoir or the intermediate or the de definitive host to and which can further cause to like problems to the uh, the humans. So the best way is to boil the meat and then give to animals. Why to eat the raw or the uncooked food? So here if you see uh, the difference when we boil the, the meat. Uh, it it can kill the bacteria, the fungus, and the parasites, the kinococcus granulosus here. Uh, so the causes of foodborne diseases it could be categorized into bacteria, virus, parasites, toxin, and the chemicals which like bacteria could be Salmonella, Typhi, Campylobacter, E. coli, Vibrio cholera, the Staphylococcus, Clostridium, and the the virus could be norovirus, rotavirus, hepatitis, and the E virus. And you know that uh, they, there are certain plant virus. Then the parasites, which could be ecto and the endoparasites, the entamoeba histolytica, which which is also present in our body, but basically it maintains the E. coli and the entamoeba histolytica. They maintain the pH. But when uh, there is some problem, or we, when we eat the uncooked meat or the raw meat, meat here I'm talking about the chicken or the goat or the pork or the beef people eat. So it can, we can act as the definitive or the intermediate host. So here it could be Entomoeba, Isletica, Giardia, Cryptosporidium, Tinococcus, Tinea, Solium, Tinea, Sagineta, Ascaris, etc. And the toxins could be mycotoxin, marine toxins, and the plant toxicants, etc. And the chemicals which we talk like the heavy metals. And uh, there is a disease in the Minamata Bay, which was uh, people, they died uh, due to eating the fish which was already con uh, which was containing a lot of mercury so it is called the mercury poisoning so if you say uh, heavy metals lead cadmium mercury mercury copper the uh, industries which are sowing chemicals in the uh, these water bodies they are polluting the water bodies and as well as they are disturbing the ecological balance and in that way the the uh, if you see uh, the fish and the other stuff the sea uh, or creatures they are eating those chemicals and in that way uh, the humans who are eating them they are uh, they are taking all these chemicals the lead cadmium and the mercury so you see the chain is going up and then we have to we have to vigilant for that
And few examples of these pathogens are the roundworms, the hookworm, uh, these cystodes, the Ascaris lumbricoids, and the tinea, the flukes. These could be coccidian parasites, the tapeworm, the nematodes, paramphistoma, munisia, the nematodes. These could be ectoparasites, and if they are inside the body, they will all there. Most of the charge they will go to the intestine and develop their larvae or the feces there. So the broad category, if I divide, uh, coming to how these parasites, these foodborne parasites, they are transmitted, how they are causing uh, diseases in humans. And the disease which is transmitted to humans, they are called a zoonotic disease. And that's why we are talking, uh, we are categorizing uh, which are related to directly to humans. So here, if you see the chicken, it contributes to 12% of the disease, the pork, 10%, beef, 9%. Fruits, 9%. Fruits, I'm talking about those fruits which contain these parasites, these uh, the worms. If we don't wash them or we, they are already containing some kind of larvae or the eggs or the oocysts, then the turkey, then the vegetable rock crops with all these chemicals, all these, you can say, uh, uh, to kill the uh, people use so many uh, yeah, the chemicals to or the other stuff to control these parasites. Eggs. Then seeded vegetables, dairy, mollusks, fish, 4%, green beans, sprouts, herbs. So here you see uh, this graph represents the amount or the percentage of the disease caused by all these organisms. Uh, so uh, as I said, most of the parasites, they, they, they develop in the intestinal epithelium of, the, of humans or the definitive or the intermediate intermediate host. So here, uh, Entamoeba species, Entamoeba histolytica, uh, it 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 uh, it contains like more uh, more part of this disease than Giardia intest intestinalis, Giardia vaginalis, Blastocystis, Blantidium, Cyclospora, Cytoisospora, Entamoeba, Escaris, hookworms, Tricuris. Tinea saginata, tinea solium. So this graph represents the distribution of intestinal parasites. If we see the parasites, if we are if they are zoonotic, which parasites are like in proportion? Uh, so how uh, they are they, these parasites they are spread? So the uh, these are the factors which I think uh, they they should be pondered upon the globalization of the food supply. Uh, the more the population, the more the uh, food we need and the more experiments they are going on. And one of the uh, experiments I studied that people are trying to create artificial meat to uh, make like alternatives to look for. They are starting looking alternatives. And also uh, like in our lab, we are, uh, my professor, the, my mentor, he, he was working on all these animals and all, but now since they are banned, so pe people are trying to use some other alternative forms to uh, study the life cycle stages of all these parasites. So globalization of the food supply, increased international travel. The more people travel, that's why we have all these uh, this COVID testing at the international airports. Increasing in the population of uh, highly susceptible persons, the more increase, the more trans uh, transmission of the parasites will be there than change in culinary habits. Earlier, we used to eat. Uh, and I must say, the more cooked uh, food or the more uh, uh, uncooked food we are eating, the more chances are that we are transmitting the parasites. So it's better to cook the food like it. Uh, even wash the vegetables, wash all these. Uh, the next is? Uh, uh, hello? Yeah, kindly please mute, mute, uh, kindly mute people, audience. <laughs> so the next is increased demand for animal proteins in developing countries. As I said, the more population is there, the more food we need. And the next, uh, uh, it's a challenge for the agriculture industry to produce more food for the population, uh, increasing abundant population and the intensification of the production system. The more uh, stakeholders we are involving, the more fast we are processing it. You know, uh, all these broilers, all these chicken we are producing with chemicals, with uh, HCG hormones, how bad they are for our health. 
so uh, because um, uh, I, I I want you to present more on the meat and the dairy industry. So my uh, I would like to discuss more about that. Uh, in, uh, apart from all these, we have discussed about the the vegetables, the fruits. Why I need to we need to wash them, and then we need to careful be careful with all these uh, the uh, the preservatives and all. So the meat bone parasitic infections. Uh, these diseases are transmitted when we eat the raw or uncooked meat. Suppose if someone eats the goat or the pork, so the pork, it could be a definitive or intermediate or definitive host is the one where the sexual stage of the parasite it takes place and the, the other one, the intermediate host, uh, it contains the asexual stages. So the sexual stages which express causes the disease. So these animals, uh, the cats, the dogs or this pork, the it may be a reservoir of the parasites and the moment we eat the uncooked meat or the, their flesh, the moment we are getting the parasites, the, the larvae or the oocyst and the sporocyst, so they get multiplied in our muscles or the liver or the kidney or the intestine and then uh, the disease starts and we get the symptom. So it's very important to be careful. Uh, the, the tinea saginate or the tinea solium. The tinea solium is the pock form and pock tape form and the tinea saginata is the beef tape form, then trichinella species and uh, the USDA, US Department of Agriculture is, is spending a lot of money, the billions of dollars to work on these, to control these trichinella, cryptosporidium, toxoplasma, gondi, and sarcocystis so as to like uh, control these parasites. The next is T Toxoplasma gondi and the sarcocystis species. Apart from all these uh, ruminants and these felidae, uh, even uh, the fish and the, the reptiles, amphibians, they can transmit the disease to humans. And the other uh, important zoonotic uh, trematode is the paragonimus species. Tineasis is, is, is caused when we eat the Tinea solium. Uh, Sunil, can you please mute? Uh, please, uh, audience people, please don't uh, um, unmute your mic, please. If you, uh, if anyone has question, they can just put it in the chat and we like we can discuss it later. So the okay. next is the teniasis. So it is caused when we eat the tinea solium or the tinea uh, saginata form. So uh, it results in the disease. It has been reported in most part of the Southeast Asia. This is China, Taiwan, Korea, India, Indonesia, Thailand, where people eat the uncooked pork meat. Uh, is uh, You can see the life cycle. The human is the definitive host. And then it eats the uncooked meat and then it gets into the brain and then it, it can cause brain disease, neurological disease, and the pig is the intermediate host. Uh, so, Tinea here, you see the distribution of these parasites and Tineasis is, the, uh, is on the top, which causes the, uh, like the parasite, uh, parasitic disease in humans. So, here you see India is, uh, I think in most cases, uh, like uh, I'm, I'm not saying, but uh, the government agencies and the government stakeholders, they need to put certain laws. Like I said, the butchers, they cut the meat and then they randomly throw to some animals and then they wash the meat and then they uh, throw in the, the kitchen or the sink and then that way we are transmitting, we are spreading the disease, the parasites. So here you, you see the high prevalence uh, zone we are falling in that and tinea, teniasis, it is one of the prominent diseases. And then we talk about the human cysticercosis in India. So it uh, the Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and the Punjab, it it is like where the highly endemic disease is, uh, the cysticercosis. And then if you talk about the central part of India and then going down to south. So endemic diseases are those which are limited to that area and which are occurring regularly. So teniasis and the cysticercosis, it is very prominent in these states. Next, uh, we, we since childhood, we, we have heard that we, by eating all this cabbage, we can uh, like get infection and the neurological diseases. And it's right. It's not that uh, there is some magic, but it contains all these larvae, these tapeworms, which we eat without washing. And then the larvae we are taking and then they get into the brain. They are very small. We are not able to see. But when they get into the brain, they get multiplied. They get 
like reproduct starting mating and reproduction and then they causes the the brain disease so it's very important to wash them before use so uh, tapeworms can grow up to more than 82 feet and live for length 30 years in the body so they are the as i told you here if you see the pictures you can see a lot of all these uh, small larvae small these tapeworms in the vegetables and we are unknowingly uh, like uh, i never used to put my vegetables in uh, this cabbage and the uh, in the spinach in the boiled water but now i i usually wash them and then put in boiled water or the vinegar or the potassium permanganate before using them so that the parasites and these larvae could be killed and then we, it, they are safe to use so uh, the prevention how we can prevent the transmission of these parasites especially from the vegetables we are we are eating so uh, we can soak them in uh, water and the potassium permanganate for two to five minutes and then uh, they are uh, after that we can wash with normal water and then they are safe to use and the next uh, the other uh, thing is to mixture of vinegar and the water and then uh, this acidic solution will kill the parasites, these tapeworm larvae, and then they are good to use. So before using any, uh, like buying from the market, uh, any vegetable uh, fruits, it's better to wash them with running water, cold water, or hot water, like potassium permanganate, and then mixture of vinegar. Uh, that will, like, it will be safer for us. Uh, next, coming to, uh, we know that uh, in India, uh, we have a problem of all this contaminated water. Like we used to, you, we used to listen to the stories that uh, we have the diarrhea, someone has the diarrhea or the frequenting bowel movements or the loss of appetite. So one of the prominent parasites is the Cyclospora chitinensis, which is a foodborne and waterborne parasite. So uh, here you see the picture of the Cyclospora. Uh, Cyclospora infects the uh, small intestine and it usually causes watery diarrhea and frequent sometimes explosive bowel movements and it leads to sometimes loss of appetite, uh, weight loss, stomach blotting, fatigue, etc. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, we have to boil the water before using the water which we are getting from canals or some like sources. It's better to boil them at some temperature and then uh, drink them like Ah, uh, this is the life cycle, the fruits and vegetables we are taking and then humans, we are the definitive host and in our intestine, they are multiplying like uh, the schizones and then the merozoites and the finally they are sporulated and then the, spo uh, the sporosis, they are released again in the water or uh, in the vegetables in that way, the life cycle is completed and after the multiplication in the intestine, they can cause uh, like the bowel movements and the health issues to us. Uh, Sunil, can you provide access to the people who are waiting in the room? I, I think you have the permission to do that, right? Yeah, I've done, done it. Yes. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So the next is traveler's diarrhea is when you have two or more bouts of loose water in 24 hours. So traveler diarrhea is basically when you are traveling accidentally, you drink contaminated water. So you, you, uh, you have problem. Uh, with your bowel movements and uh, the energy, the fatigue. So the, it can be caused by many germs like bacteria, E. coli, as, as I said, Escherichia coli. It's good in our stomach. It maintains the HCL or the acidic content, but it's it's more than the problem is there. The Campylobacter, then Salmonella, Typhi, the viruses and the parasites, Giardia, which we are going to study next. So here, if you see the traveler's diarrhea, it is, it is very common. It is very prominent in the Southeast Asia and the African countries wow. where uh, the hygiene and the proper care sanitation is not taken care of. The next is the back pairs. Packers disease or the beaver sphere, uh, as I told you, the Giardia, Lamblia parasite. So here, some like we are doing the trekking or the hiking, and then we drink the water, and which is contaminated with all these pathogens or the protozoans or the coccidian parasites. So it it may cause the backpackers or the beaver's fever, in which you are losing your weight and the loss of appetite, fatigue is there, diarrhea is there, loose motions are there. So we have to be careful. Even uh, like we see the beer grills, he used to drink a lot of stuff, but 
uh, it's more of you can say the real things. The more important is to boil the water. Don't play with that. Uh, it's always better to take care of your health and then rather than doing hypothetical things. So uh, now that was more of all these parasites which we see in normal life, all these from fruits, the spinach and the pork, the beef, the, uh, the goat meat, which we are transmitting without like unknowing. So the best thing is to wash the vegetables, uh, to treat them with like potassium permanganate. Vinegar is there with our homes, in our homes, in our kitchen. And we can just put them and wash them and then we can use. And then for the meat, it's better to cook them at, at some temperature before use. Even the fish or even the eggs. People used to eat eggs. But I think with all these parasites, it's better to like, cook them properly, cook them. And also, if some butcher is there in your vicinity, just talk to them and tell them that it's not good to just randomly give any like part of meat to any dog or the cat. It may transmit disease. We are like we are a bunch of population, but it's it's better to be aware and let people know the things, the, the realities. So uh, the Toxoplasma gondi, my lab where I'm working, a uh, lot of work has been done. All these parasites, all these Toxo, Sarcosystis, Neospora. So I'm going to like talk a bit so that we know that why uh, why uh, like i know that or uh, sir might know the that we have this uh, veterinary institute in ludhiana but i think the need of the r is government on the people or the stakeholder they st they should start working on all these uh, the parasites toxoplasma the, the neospora then sarcosystis which are very important in us the U.S. Congress, U.S. government is spending so much money. But in India, when I was in India, I, I didn't knew that these parasites are so important. So as uh, our topic is also the food, uh, the research career or the career in the food microbiology, why not to go in research field of all these parasites? Why not to go to farm or a, or like some, some kind of dairy and then start working on them and then these parasites? Like uh, under some kind of... Uh, Ethical practice or some kind of scientific guidelines start working on them. So uh, talking about this Toxoplasma gondi, the definitive host is cat and uh, the intermediate host could be the chicken, the pork or the, uh, the rat, all these and deer and the sheep. So what happens is the, uh, the cat, it uh, secretes the fecal matter, the stool and then which are taken by all these animals and then they are sporulated and then uh, sometimes the uncooked meat is ingested by a uh, human. And if suppose the human is a female, a pregnant female and the toxoplasma uh, oocysts are there, uh, mistakenly if she or she like, if she ingests, then there is a problem for the fetus. So the fetus could, the tachyzoids of it may cause harm to the fetus, the, to the pregnant lady. So uh, like, uh, we know that cats, they are uh, the dogs and the cats, they are good, but it's very important to be careful that sometimes they may carry a lot of parasites. And the parasites are everywhere, but the important thing is to be how we are protecting ourselves. So, uh, the, this is how the life cycle of Toxoplasma gondi it takes place. So, next is Sarcosystis uh, hominis, and there are a lot of species Sarcosystis cruzi, which we are working on Sarcosystis hirsuta and then. The other ones. So here, if you see uh, these, uh, uh, basically, Sarcosystis hominis, it is a zoonotic parasite. So it may uh, it may present in in the muscles of these ruminants or the pig. So if it's present in the ruminant, it will be Sarcosystis hominis. Aditya, I think you are mute. Uh, can, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, I, I done it. Sorry. So uh, I was talking about the life cycle of the sarcosystis uh, because uh, there are a lot of species around 200, but uh, we are talking only about the hominis because they are the zoonotic parasites. So it involves the pork and the, the beef, the cattle, uh, they are they are the host, intermediate intermediate host, and the humans are the 
definitive host. So when we take the uncooked meat, then they are getting they they get into intestine. They start the development from the the maize to sporocyst, unsporulated, then the oocyst, and the sporulated oocyst, and then the sporocyst. Sporozoites are there, then the gametes and the schizons, and finally they are into the feces. So in that way, the life cycle gets completed, which may, uh, after that, uh, the disease could, could cause this diarrhea and the, the, the bowel movements, loss of appetite, the weakness, uh, and the other issues, which are health issues, basically. Uh, the next is the Neospora, Neospora caninum, which is also an important uh, parasite of all these, uh, the cattle and the, the dog. So here, the dog is the definitive host, which I said, the, which contains the, uh, the sexual stages and the intermediate host. Uh, these are the, the, the cow or they are the intermediate host, could be pig or the cow or the horse. So the important thing is that if uh, the cattle, it ingests, uh, then uh, these Neospora caninum oocyst or the sporocyst, then uh, the fetus is infected. Uh, in the other case, Doxoplasma gondii, the humans, the fetus, it was infected, but here the Neospora caninum dog is the definitive host. In that ca case, uh, the fetus of the uh, this cattle, it is infected. And uh, the last is the Sarcocystis neurona, as the name suggests, in, it uh, infects the brain. So, uh, definitive host is the opossum and the raccoon is the intermediate host and recently we published a paper on that so and the, uh, uh, it, it, uh, if the host it ingests the sporocyst and uh, then uh, the brain the neurological damage of the, of the horse could be there so here we see the sarcocystis neurona uh, Uh, and then we talk about we have, uh, we have started uh, like we discussed about all these uh, these parasites of these fruits vegetables the chemicals which we deal regu on regular basis then we talked about these uh, few of the parasites of the the beef basically the sarcocystis neurona then toxoplasma gondii and the neurospora caninum now we talk about uh, people eat a lot of fish so if we e we eat the raw fish what are the chances of the infection uh, as per my knowledge, like I did my PhD on the fish parasites, fish are not zoonotic. Like they don't contain, they don't have the parasites which are zoonotic, which are dangerous to humans. But if we eat the raw fish, there are chances that we are taking the parasites, the cestodes, trematodes, uh, um, like other parasites which are inside the fish. So one of them is diphylobotrium and the chloroanchiasis. So if we are taking the diphylobotrium, the irritability, skin disease, the heart and the muscular, and then in that case, uh, eyes in the skin, liver enlargement, tenderness, and the gastrointestinal issues are there. So apart from not only these, uh, the meat or the pork or the eggs, they, they contain the parasites or the larvae or the eggs of all these parasites, but also if we... Uh, eat the raw fish, there are chances that we are taking the parasites which are attached to them or which are inside all these fish. So, I uh, just wanted to share a bit about uh, these mixozoa. These mixozo are the fish parasites and it involves the fish and the oligochaete or the tubifex worm. So, these are primarily the aquatic parasites and here if you see, you can see, sorry, the mixobolus and the thelohanlus and the henigua and here on the picture of the infected fish so it is a night area. Just want you to share that uh, the, the fish can also har harbor a lot of parasites. So what could be the preventive measures? Uh, just I want to conclude my talk. So then we can like have some questions and discussions. Uh, what, what could be the preventive measures? The, the beef, pork, we lamb, steaks, roast, the minimum temperature we have to cook is for like at least 145 degree Fahrenheit or and allow to rest for at least three minutes. And then the ground meats, 160 degree Fahrenheit, ground poultry, 165 degree Fahrenheit, uh, the fully cooked ham, then the eggs, the chicken, 165 degree, like it close to it is 73 degree, 73.9 degree Celsius, then eggs at 71 fish. And the, so this is the optimum temperature where we can cook our uh, all these uh, meat products, and then we can kill the parasites, the larvae present inside them. And for the other fruits and vegetables, 
uh, like we can simply wash them and then put in hot water and then uh, we can kill these parasites which are present inside. Uh, here if you see uh, the meat and poultry, what we can avoid and the better choice. So we have to see uh, what we want, what is our need and how we can choose the alternative which is good for us. So uh, here if you see the meat and poultry, we have to avoid the raw or uncooked meat. The better choice cooked, which we are cooked. Then the seafood, always avoid the raw or the uncooked fish. Uh, and then uh, if the better choice is to cook them, the dairy, avoid unpasteurized milk. Always have the pasteurized milk. The pasteurization is done at 72, I think 72 degrees Celsius to kill all the bacteria and the, and the parasites present inside them, basically the bacteria. Then the eggs, uh, always avoid uh, raw cookie and then uh, which we are putting the raw things, the raw raw egg inside that. Uh, use Always use the boiled eggs or the pasteurized eggs. Then the sprouts, avoid raw or uncooked sprouts such as alfalfa bean or any other sprout. Always use, always eat the cooked sprout. Then the vegetables, always wash them. It's uh, like we have to avoid, like we are eating. It's a, sometimes we go to the market and start taking the, the, the fruits or the vegetables like from childhood. It, it's our habit. I think most of the time we use like start eating the, the, the beans or the other, uh, other fruits. But it, it's not good for the health. I know uh, like unknowingly or knowingly we are ingesting the parasites. So the cheese like... Uh, so uh, this was the uh, the paper which recently published and it was based on sarcosystis neurona, which is uh, killing the horses. So this was my talk. Uh, the, the best thing to food safety is to clean, then separate and then cook. And then if you want to store, chill and then use it later, the, like preheat and then eat it. So... Uh, this was I wanted to share like my what I the, what I basically feel about the food safety because now I'm involved with all these food uh, foodborne pathogens. I thought why not to share which I which I'm learning from all these great scientists and which I'm experiencing that what what we are lacking, what we are what we can do, uh, being a part of uh, like microbiology and the the food industry or if we are we want to be healthy enough. Or if you want to aware people, why not to be uh, aware? Like, yeah. So, and the the next part that is the career counseling. I think because all these students who are who are the participants, like you are already uh, know you are already part of this microbiologist uh, India. So uh, the career we can have discussion related to career, the research prospects, and the food industry. What what are the upcoming field? What is the upcoming field? And what are the options available for students who are a part of the microbiology, who are having microbiology as their subject, as their course. So this was from my side. Any questions? And let, let's have a great interaction session right now. Thank you, Sunil. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Aditya, for a wonderful presentation because even I'm in the same field in the parasitology, parasites, so we are dealing with all these parasites here in PGI also yeah. because yeah. first, you know, if, if there is uh, no chance of like, uh, they're not able to detect anything, like in you know, a blood no I... parameters are normal, other things are normal, then after that, they are going to go uh, check for the stool samples of the patient, right? Right, so yeah. It is important, like, you know, check that because the main thing about the parasite, their eggs, their eggs, because the stomach yeah. pH not able to destroy them. So right. directly they're going to the intestine. Uh, they're uh, when they they are just stored in the intestine and they start infecting the human. They start harboring their self when they're right. making their face. So uh, this is like you know some parasites. Not all the parasites are doing like that. Yeah, some of you like know, so they, Yesterday yeah. only I received fox, and then before that wolf fecal sample, the stool sample. So we did all these sucrose flotation and then we we were ab able to extract the oocyst of uh, the sarcocystis and we are looking for the toxoplasma. So you you see like how uh, we are trying, like uh, as you said, we I'm, I'm very much involved on all these fecal samples. Even we have the cyclospora samples with us and we are trying to, I, I extracted the DNA and 
the problem is that we are we are seeing isospora but i would like to our target is to see if there is cyclospora cantonensis it is from cdc center of disease control of the usa so mm. that is how like as you, you said it's very tough to see the parasites because they are in the egg form the oo system it's tough to isolate them to filter them to do the sucrose and all protection for magnets yeah 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 even dr dipte it is very hard to you know uh, find out with the microscopy because somebody right. because a student here like thinking that if we don't have facilities we don't have chemicals we don't have this and that suppose we, if we have a microscope with us a microscope right. only then with the right. microscope microscope we can do lot of uh, you know microscopical examination of stools but student, i'll tell you one thing uh, dealing with all these parasites especially all these uh, you are saying the the human samples it's very important to be preventive to take preventive measures with all the gloves yes, yes. all the gloves and the the pp kit and the, so you are not ingesting the parasites basically so it's very important uh, yeah <laughs> hello sir uh, would you like to share something uh, yes yes uh, dr aditya it was yes, an excellent sir. talk and ah, we thank you, really sir. enjoyed your talk it was very nice thank you sir i just your want you to share what i love but yeah <laughs> your ppts were very vivid and Thank we you, could sir. understand all you said you know there were 100 plus people in the zoom oh that's great yeah that's that great shows, sir it's a privilege that shows yeah. your talk is very well taken thank you sir this is what what working with usda i felt i talked to sunil that yeah uh, we we see in india like when i uh, like Uh, when i was in india i had the, like i went to the market and bought this the goat meat and i saw like he, the butcher he was just throwing the meat to the dog so uh, here it's prohibited you can't wash the meat in the kitchen because the sink because you are uh, like contaminating the water bodies you it, it make any lot of parasite so it's basically the vigilance and the awareness which which right. is the need of the rn you right. are sir dealing with all these microbiology and your expertise could be of like utmost utmost importance yeah aditya what is the main application of your work yes sir uh, basically uh, sunil knows that my phd was in fish parasitology uh, then uh, I, in israel i was doing the computational biology and the taxonomy the molecular biology and the computational thing of these mixozoa but when i got a chance to work with, 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 yeah uh, we are working with the food born pathogens uh, that is basically uh, we are trying to get anything which is zoonotic we are we, uh, we are like getting samples from all these farms and all these the marts and the showrooms Uh, the beef samples uh, right now we are getting the beef samples on regular basis and then we make smears and then we see uh, last week only we found the thick, thick walled parasite which is which can be zoonotic so uh, our basically survey is the beef survey where we are trying to get the parasites and if there is some sarcosystis species then we are reporting to the government directly and apart from that we are also getting uh, the samples like as i told you uh the sea lions we got the samples from sea lion and then from the wolf from the this fox so we are trying to uh, extract the oocis or the sporocis from all these so that we can see if there is some kind of uh, cyclospora or toxoplasma or the new spora because here uh, the government is spending a lot of money on all these cats and the dogs and the zoonotic parasites or the cyclospora which is which is a, like prominent cause of the diarrhea or the uh like disease of the humans so the the main application of my study is the, my research is to see if there is some zoonotic disease or not so right. like i love the work because yeah very nice yes so thank you yes. was a nice talk huh, aditya and thank you, sir. Uh, we really enjoyed it and dr sunil you can carry on please so uh, thank you dr aditya we have i think one or two questions from the chat box uh, thanks so for the informative yeah, student uh, they were asking that sir germinated sprouts are high in nutrients nutrient content so what is the point in cooking and consuming sir uh, this is the one uh, question it depends yeah basically uh, my point was uh, see if is some kind of parasite is there or not if it's not it basically you are right that germinated sprout they are good for your nutrient contents or all these 
omega and the the other nutrients, the micronutrients. But the the thing is that we have to be careful that they should they 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 don't contain any larvae or the eggs of these parasites. Somewhere somewhere we are dealing with all these parasites in our day to day life. But the important thing is that to be careful enough. Like uh, suppose uh, the cabbage, just put in the 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 boiling water just two or three minutes and then it will kill the bacteria and the, the larvae of all these parasites. So for the germinated sprouts, you have to be careful that uh, the, the moment you are eating, there could be some kind of larvae or the eggs. So try to filter them out and then eat that. There's, there's no harm in eating that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of Surana was asking, uh, sir, please tell me the opportunities in food microbiology. So I um, think uh, right now yeah. the food microbiology is the booming industry and yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think the students, if they are doing graduation, they, they should target uh, the masters and then try to do masters with the research if they want to come in research program, there are like bundle of program, bundle of opportunities for them to go in the industry. Uh, we have all these dairy industry, the milk industry, and then uh, the research institute, they can go to them they can work as, uh, even in the Mohali, I think there is PBTI and then the Verka. So start, like starting with your graduation and the master's, try to look for some. Uh, 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 here, I think, Sunil, I can share my personal experience that the more uh, skills, the more uh, kind of different knowledge you have, basically the skills, whether it is uh, DNA extraction, RNA extraction, then uh, you can say uh, the computational biology, some kind of Python. The more skills you have, the flow cytometry, the ELISA, the more uh, you are going to fit in different uh, microbiology industry. And then the microbiology we are doing with the testing and then the this PCR, this flow cytometry, then cell counting, human cytometry and all. So it's better to uh, go for all these short-term courses like Coursera, Udex, Udemy. There is a lot of there are a lot of courses available online. They are free of like obviously free. Most of them are free. Just try to enroll them. Try to learn. Try try to up upgrade yourself more and more uh, like skills, and then try to do some kind of research in the masters. And then there are a lot of industries. I think there are there there's a booming industry, the microbiology, food microbiology. Yes. I think we have to be expert in a particular field or particular technique so that we can be perfect and we can be like uh, perfect in that field and we can go ahead with that. So I think right. uh, one, yeah. So there is mm -hmm. uh, Rakesh Kumar. Uh, Rakesh ji, you can unmute yourself and ask what do you want to say? Rakesh Kumar, are you there? Thank you, sir, for giving me opportunity. First yeah. of all, I want to thank uh, Dr. Sunil and uh, you also, sir, the eminent speaker and Professor Samjit Singh, sir, for organizing such a lecture. Or I can say that bombardment of knowledge in these lectures. Sir, my question is that um, uh, I have worked with silver nanoparticle. So is it possible uh, like uh, doing nano edible coating silver nanoparticle mixed with uh, either some... Uh, uh, substances like uh, chili powder or any other like ginger coating edible coating is it possible uh, which can help uh, the we can, which can help us to prevent food contamination during my oh. MSc, I, I worked on silver nanoparticle uh, like uh, i worked on silver nanoparticle and check its in anti bacterial activity uh, with the help of neem and uh, belgiri i may, may synthesize these silver nice. nanoparticles Good. And the size was approx uh, uh, less than 25 uh, nanometer size was approx. So uh, mm -hmm. I synthesized a good quality nanoparticle. So is it possible to make coating of these? I tried, but due to less availability of instrument into my lab, I belong from BioNano department, completed my uh, post-graduation in MSc microbiology. So due to unavailability of some instrument and little bit guidance, I missed this chance to develop any kind of coating uh, for food microbiology. So because there was less connection with food my food department and our department. So is it possible to work on this? Uh, Sunil, would you like to answer or uh, start if you would like? Yeah. I just add on a bit, I think that's because Even, silver... Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Aditya, mm -hmm. I also work for the nano, nanoparticles preparation right. because, you know, the nanoparticles, uh, yeah, particles is also doing, but what about their safety? First, first is the safety, how those nanoparticles mm -hmm. are safe for the humans. Yeah. 
so we need right. some studies some evidences can we code those uh, kind of nano particles on drugs on food on other things right first we need the safety studies if they are safe like if human going to consume if some content or some amount will be there in the food because whatever we are consuming you know along with the food that your nano particles will also be ingested right so is there any any kind of toxicity any kind of problem in future because whatever we are eating that is going to be digested and that is going to be uh, filtered by the kidneys our organs there will be you know load on every organ right so we need those kind of studies first maybe in like small body weight right, small yeah. animal mind model or other things so after that we can go ahead for the uh, studies on human trial or human things or we can do that that there is no problem many people are doing uh, studies on nanoparticles nano preparation are there but sometimes there are some issues also because everything is, should be cleared by the kidneys because we all know whatever the drug in the market it is not very easy to uh, launch any uh, drug before like one month two month three months sometime it will take more than 20 or 15 years to uh, like have that particular uh, drug or antibiotic or molecule in the market so i think dr soranjit sir can also add something on this because you know it is not easy to get anything in the market uh, to launch everything right so can you please add something on that sir maybe our knowledge is uh, limited so you can just uh, throw some light yes sir, sir are you there uh, can you hear sir yes sir prakash sir would you like to yes sir uh, can you yes you can unmute sir you can ask or you can add some can you hear me sir yes 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 sir hello sir good morning and good evening for you i believe <coughs> mm -hmm. i first of all congratulate uh, aditya for such a wonderful lecture actually i am heading a food microbiology department in cftr i mysore that's great sir yeah exactly exactly so actually little bit busy schedule but then still uh, while preparing getting ready i thought i should attend your lecture <coughs> yeah. uh, so maybe some uh, two three points one of course i posted the question on biopreservation because i work mm -hmm. on bacteria bacteriocin like nisin pediocin subtidin plantar mm -hmm. you know how is their uh, future uh, is in indian context or even in us also because right now nisin is being used as a food preservative in canned and dairy products especially to deal with the clostridium bottle in number right right yeah <coughs> yeah, yes. yeah even uh, pedocin actually is there uh, as yeah, ultra tm in for some formulation but then they know they have actually very narrow spectrum of inhibitor activity right you know? yeah So how yes such uh, we can look in a future to explore this antibacterial substances from food grade bacteria as a substitute or as a strategy for bio preservation another thing is uh, with reference to now processed food no? now you will see when you visit india everything you will get in the supermarket you yeah know? right was not the case 10 years back or 15 years back uh, right <clears throat> and then now we also process the food in one place and then get distributed whether it is a meal or even the vegetables or even the grains or the day, any products mm -hmm. you know so how actually this is a really a pathogenic bacteria is a concern in uh, indian yeah. context that was because right we were studying 15 20 years back everyone says no no this this is just food borne pathogens are only for the temperate climate us european countries because mm -hmm. They yeah. don't cook the food. They don't cook food, or right. uh, they, they eat, you know they eat mostly the raw food. So and then low temperature, like uh, your listeria or monocytosis. Right. Yeah. Right. It just, yeah. And, uh, so these pathogens are not really a concern for our uh, country, you know. But then, as I told you, that the situation is not what it was before. Uh, right. Doctors, doctors will agree with me. So at this this context, how you actually emphasize this? Uh, the food uh, importance of food microbiology in indian context right exactly what is I your think, sir, it's very important yeah so i think mm -hmm. we we can follow sir and then for me like i i can compare us israel and india it's very important now i can feel 
oh, come on, like the stakeholder, I like people like you, sir. Why not to involve more and more people and tell that, oh, this is this is important. Like, as you said, rightly said, it's not only US and the, the other countries where the food is not properly cooked, but the other parts, the other things which we are lacking somewhere, contamination, the hygiene, the I think hygiene or the, the proper sanitation, it's one of the important things, like all these bacteria, can pylobacteria and the if you see the 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 cyclosporas, like there are a lot of things which which we ignore basically being like it's that it's it's not harmful for us, but yes. it's very important to. But here the problem is that going through the CDC and in even in India, I think it's all the ethical and the the government. It's very important to uh, like uh, make government on the bodies aware that mm. what we want to do, what is our objective. This is what we want. Like this is this this is uh, this um, this is what I'm saying, and this is what could the, the, these are the results. So I think uh, uh, with the Indian context, it's very important to look for some alternates. It's yeah, more yeah. of the population and 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 this. Yes. So basically, I think, I think we need a strict surveillance monitoring, and then yeah. bring those uh, details to in the knowledge of government, so that we will right. be. Able because most of the time, no, in Indian context, it goes unnoticed, you know. Yes. Some people will get a sick or fall sick or some food burn diseases will be there in some small patches. Most of the times it gets unnoticed. And then right. we, usually, uh, we don't usually much bother or then, no, we just avoid the, in such cases, you know. But now you see this food industry also in India grow, is growing very fast. Yeah. Then our I see a lot of Sir, as I said you, when I was in India, I couldn't see any research paper or all these related to toxoplasma, the sarcosystis, because mm. I'm right now I'm working and now I, I see veterinary. Yeah, uh, one of the questions of the student was veterinary parastology. I yes. will talk veterinary parastology as a whole. I don't see students enrolling in the veterinary parastology. Here yeah. I can see the Brazil and the US and the other people. They are investing. The student they are investing a lot of time in veterinary parastology. And the I think in coming ten to twenty years, the time is for veterinary parastology. I did my PhD in fish parastology, but I realized that uh, if I have to do something better, if I have to do get good funds, I need to switch to some applied or zoonotic thing. And proper surveillance and proper monitoring is very yeah. important. Proper data maintenance and then comes the research thing. Then the funding is basically. So I think uh, you are very right. You are, uh, I think hats off to people like you who are working closely with all these parasites. And then uh, I think it's, the need of the R is to look into the the things and then uh, make people aware that this is uh, it's very important that these pathogens then they create they can create havoc for the human health. Definitely. So what's your, what's your, you are working on? I think you told what you're working yeah. and what's your the goal I, is. Bacteria, sub lactic acid bacteria and bacillus. Mm -hmm. Probiotics. Okay. probiotics. Oh, right. Then antibiotic resistance in lactic acid mm -hmm. bacteria. Mm -hmm. Then some on microbial en enzymes. Okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's great, yeah. yeah. Who will be in touch? Please share your email details. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Good luck for your further studies in food uh, micro. Yeah, Paras actually, yeah, yeah, I am loving this work, and I, I could see the students, and then uh, there are a lot of veterinary parastologists working with me, and then uh, I think uh, now, like we are directly involved with all the stakeholders with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, so mm -hmm. we are uh, monitoring like uh, all these the farms and the agricultural uh, animals that whether they contain all these zoonotic parasites or not. And then the other section, like we have uh, sections like I'm working with animal parasitic diseases laboratory. So here we have certain sections who are working on all these. Like my professor is working directly with the beef parasites. Then one of the professor is working on all these uh, clostridium and then cyclospora, isospora, then trichinella. So they are working directly on, on the waterborne parasites, basically. Then there are there is a section who are working on the chicken parasite. Then there is a section who are working on the pig parasites. So I think this is really interesting to directly work with the stakeholders and see these parasites. So And I think uh, like people like you, like we can collaborate and because 
uh, my basically i started working with this parasite and computation and all i was not directly involved uh, like directly involved with the applied field my study was more taxonomy histology and the molecular and genomics now i'm switch, switching all these parasites and then i'm directly dealing with animals and the stakeholders so people like you and me we can collaborate and then we can start something which is which is like which is uh, like you can say very ground level and then we can present the data the surveillance could be there and then there yeah. are some <clears throat> yeah by the way you think any ai ml tool uh, in uh, surveillance or monitoring of this zoonotic pathogens or no sir should... we are just uh, no actually we are just using the the basically the chi square and the statistical tools Okay, that's okay. it and also we are doing the immunohistochemistry chemistry and the other stuff we are not directly involved with all these uh, the other ai tools we are just doing the whole genome analysis the genome structure of all these parasites and then the the biostatistical mm -hmm. analysis yeah wonderful wonderful thank you great sir yeah so yes yes thank you thank you dr aditya now anybody if want to ask in the audience, you are all welcome to ask any questions, students. If you have any questions for Dr. Aditya or for me or for uh, like for the panel, you are most welcome. If you want to add something, you are most welcome. Hello. Or, uh, yes. Sir, uh, this is regarding the sushi. And uh, it's one of uh, the most <laughs> trickiest uh, item to deal with because uh, what is exactly done uh, in sushi? Because... Uh, it's it's a, always a raw thing and it is none of the portion right, yeah. right. in in us uh, i think you just tickle my, was like uh, in us uh, you go to every place you could find sushi 10 to 20 types of sushi and i was surprised enough because obviously it is raw so the thing is that i think uh, the the people the stakeholders who are preparing that they 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 might know that this is without the parasites but obviously it's very important to avoid that. Even whenever I go to all these seafood and the other like uh, the places, I avoid that sushi. Uh, I think in future there could be some recommendations or something uh, by the government that uh, it's mostly it's a Japanese food. But your question is right. Even people are uh, avoiding that. But it's more of the mindset that sushi is amazing. It's it's a it's a kind of class basically here so i think it's not good for the health basically the any 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 meat or the chicken or the fish if you're consuming it raw or uncooked it's not good for your health yeah thank you sir and uh, is it possible to make some edible coating with natural substances sir like for example uh, we have the maggi taste makers uh, 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 instead of that can we make an edible coating film itself as such? Uh, you put the packet in the water and even the coating itself is uh, uh, like cookable and uh, like zero waste concept. Is it possible? Sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? It's possible, very much possible. The Unless it's not causing harm to your intestine, your internal organs, or it's it's uh, very much uh, influenced with your pH, body pH and body system, that's fine. I think there's no problem. But my uh, my expertise is not that much into the nanoparticle or the silver coating and the other stuff. That's why I think there were a few questions and I asked Sunil and the other people to answer. So my answer would be because I know a bit about that. So it's always good if the human body accept that there is no imbalance of the pH and then the, like if we are able to digest that it doesn't contain any, uh, any uh, element or any kind of like yeah, because stuff, you know, substance. Yeah. Yes, yes, I would like that because you know, nano coating everything is okay, everything is fine. But we need evidence, we need proof that this is the evidence and this is the proof. We need a lot of data and we need a lot of studies to prove our uh, research that okay, this is our research and these are the evidences. Now, now you can go for uh, go for uh, like patent also if your particular formulation your core particular for like coating or whatever you want to like uh, give to the like society or you want to work on that you need a lot of studies and a lot of references and a lot of uh, uh, sure you know studies which would be used as evidences that this has been done already and the people are using so that's why we want to do it here in india and we want to apply on for food preservation and for to keep our food safe and we want to do the coating right so for that you need uh, studies you need evidences and for that 
particular research, you need uh, proof that you have done it and earlier it has been done by other people also. Because something new, if you are going to launch that, okay, you are saying this, this, so you have to. Okay, so uh, now yes. the time is for the closing. So, uh, Dr. Okay, Adite, sir. I think we and don't have Sunil, more questions. From the, yeah. I think, Sunil, there is, there is a question and I, I just uh, would like to answer like combine, I think, few questions of the students who are trying so to what, get the best okay, what college food products program. are made from the seaweed? Uh, why is seaweed used in food? Uh, and please suggest the best college for MSc in food microbiology in India. Like this is a I think uh, the main uh, the main motive of my lecture was to interact with the students and uh, I think uh, few a few students have the questions of the how to pursue their studies further and then which are mm -hmm. which colleges are best for the master program and yeah, then yeah, you can answer yeah you can answer it. you can answer better. Yeah, so basically for the, all the students who are pursuing the graduation in the master's, it's better like you can try uh, which field you want to go. The first thing is that try to uh, uh, like find out research out the labs which are uh, in coordination with your research interest. That's the first step to look for those labs or those professors, those PIs who are working on the food microbiology. There are some good colleges, some universities where you can go and then start uh, trying to get in touch with them, start working with them, try to learn more and more skills. And then after doing your master, there was a question that if he wants to do a PhD, uh, uh, the guy Rakesh Kumar, he wants to do a PhD from abroad. So the best thing is to look for professors or look for universities which which are in align, like alignment with your uh, interest, subject of interest. Approach them, approach all the PIs, all the professors, all the teachers, and then write them uh, mails you want to work with them and then pursue them like be in touch with them and then try to get like uh, uh, their confidence basically they want to see that whether you'll be able to work or not so it's more of pursuing the people the pursuing the professors so make a list to which universities you want to apply in abroad like all the places and then start sending mails to them the more you like the more you put in your efforts the more chances are that you'll get a uh, like granting application from that college so regarding the seaweed, I think uh, it's mostly uh, what food products, it's mostly the, which we eat, the, like as we see uh, in the, like uh, in USA, all these uh, seafood, they are, they are trying to make different foodstuffs uh, so that they can be edible. It's mostly the, you can say the boiled ones, the boiled one, which they are preparing and then for the customers. So why seaweed? used in food to enhance the flavor to to make them more you can say more flavorful and then also they they could that they could sustain for a longer period of time yeah so i think that's from my side uh, and it was nice talking to you so if you want to conclude go ahead please thank you yeah. very much dr aditya i just would like to say thanks to all the community of mbsi president deshmukh sir Dr. Soranjit Singh, sir, the president of uh, Chandigarh chapter. And uh, I would like to add that uh, Dr. Soranjit Singh, sir, is doing very, very uh, tremendous, I think, for the Chandigarh. Because from Chandigarh, this is the first time that uh, any scientist or any person who came forward for the help of the students, research scholars, and all people, because he is uh, making a big team, a huge, uh, like, uh, community or a huge group of the students and he is convincing yes, the students, talking to the students every every day now and then and uh, the people are contributing now the students are now in the groups so i would like to th say thank you very much to all the people thank you doctor uh, and uh, i i also thank want to congratulate to dr aditya uh, dr aditya thank you very much to, like contributing uh, to the humanity, to the students, to the pupils. So this we is what we have learned from yeah, so <laughs> yeah. We have to be there so for the students. To be done. So, so I concluded here. Thank you very much, Dr. Aditya, Dr. Sonanjit Singh, sir, and what? the president yeah. of uh, this MBSI unit. Uh, so, that was an amazing, uh, like, and thanks for providing, the, providing this opportunity for me with the interaction of all the students and everyone. It, it was a privilege presenting my talk to you. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.
have a good so morning I, once again i want to thank uh, dr sunil kumar right. for conducting yeah, that talk good. so well right from right. the welcome up to the vote of thanks so i i'm Great. very thankful to dr sunil and he's a very active person he always helps me whatever i say he does and Great, he's sir. a very enthusiastic team, you know? young man yeah nice team yes. right and we are thank you also aditya we learned a lot from you yeah okay bye then thanks a lot uh, sir it was it was likewise okay i'll thanks. share i'll share my email address to sunil and then he can further provide to the students I'll, thank I'll you sir bye i'll keep in touch bye sir.